everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to Tea Time with Quest Care. First of all, thank you everybody for joining us. Here I am. Did you guys miss me? I know for the last uh, one I wasn't there. I'm pretty sure you guys missed me. <laughs> well, I missed you guys and I'm so, so happy to do this segment today. Um, first, please give a warm welcome to a renowned and spectacular orthopedic spine surgeon, Dr. Mark Valenti. Entire Quest Care team welcomes you, Dr. Valente. We are super, super happy you're here. We are super thankful that you devote your time to our tea time and to help our viewers learn a little bit about back pain and neck pain. So yes, guys, you heard it right. We're gonna talk with Dr. Valenti about common neck and back issues. I'm pretty sure once in your lifetime, you must have had a little bit of back pain or a neck pain. So we wanted to shed a little bit of light about it today. You guys all know me, I'm Dr. Bharati, and you guys know I'm at Questcare Medical Clinic in Capel. I'm a family practitioner and uh, specialized in geriatrics, and you know my heart lies with my geriatrics. So I know they also suffer with a lot of back and neck pain. So we're gonna try to address some of that today. And Dr. Mark Valenti uh, wanted to come and uh, do a little service for our patients to tell them a little bit more about what can we what can we learn about neck and back issues. Before I begin our show, you guys know that none of this that we talk about here today is a medical advice. It's just for information and it's just for entertainment purposes only. But if you find any of this information valuable, informative, educational, feel free to share this with your loved ones. I feel, and Dr. Valenta agreed with me when I told him that if, even if we help one person with our information today, we feel like we did God's work. So please share this on your social media, share this with your family and friends. And um, this is a live show, so definitely post comments and questions. We will try to address them during the show. Like us, share us, tag us, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and I'll ask Dr. Volante if he wants to do a TikTok with me today. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm game. Before I begin our today's segment on low back pain and neck pain, neck, back and neck pain in general, I wanted to introduce uh, a little bit on Dr. Valenti. Dr. Mark Valenti is one of the most trusted spine doctors in our nation. He is a specialist in minimally invasive procedures and a founder and medical director of Disc Spine Institute. By the way, Disc Spine Institute is all over DFW. They have multiple locations. They have it in Plano, Dallas, North Fort Worth, Arlington, Decatur. So you can find Dr. Valenti in any of these areas and get your help if you need to. He is an expert in solving back issues and he loves when his patients return back to their normal lives and are pain-free. Uh, a little bit of fact about Dr. Valenti. I was very, very honored that he decided to come and see us today. He is ranked number three among all the orthopedic surgeons who have sat for their oral board examinations. And that's amazing, Doc, that's amazing. He's a board certified and fellowship trained orthopedic spine surgeon. He has lectured and published extensively. He has participated in numerous research protocols and he's appointed a clinical instructor at both Michigan State University and University of California. I did University of California at Riverside. My bachelor's is from there. So um, I was learning where did he get his surgical techniques and his procedures, and I came to know that you are also a UC San Diego graduate. So That's right. Not he too did far his training from, from not too far train. from Riverside. Yeah. Yep. And he, I, my family's still in Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. he, I see you did get your training from Cedar Sinai Los Angeles Hospital, and then he's been a surgeon. Uh, he's done his hosp uh, special surgery at New York, Philadelphia, Michigan, all those areas. So. He comes with a lot of, lot of experience and a lot of good training. And he's a, he's a very, very humble human at heart. So it's our honor that you are here and we welcome you. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys taking the time and inviting me on here. It's an honor and I'm just glad to be with you. you. And hopefully we can help some people and just yes. help them better understand some of you the said problems. It beautifully. You said You know, want to help cause... people. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. So we're going to begin by asking... Uh, well, I actually wanted to say, did you know this, Doc? I'm sure you knew this. About 31 million Americans have low back pain. Yeah, it's actually the number two reason why somebody will go visit their primary care physician, Absolutely. low back pain, after the common cold. After the common cold. Yeah. And then it's the number third reason for disability and people being off of work. That's right. Asking for unable to go to work. So I found this fun fact and I wanted to bring it to you guys, why we wanted to talk about it. And we see this 
as a family practitioner, I see this and I know you also have come across this that work is affected, family life is affected, social life is affected, athletic life is affected. And then all this, when they get affected, what happens? Psychiatric life gets affected, which is why low back pain and then we just say it's back pain, it's neck pain, but they do tend to have a big impact on a human's life. So we're gonna talk about it. I wanted to ask you, Doc, uh, what are some common causes for back issues, neck issues? Sure. What have you seen? Some of the most common reasons for people to have neck and back problems would be degenerative discs mm -hmm. and herniated discs. Yes, and I'm so, so glad you mentioned that because I wanted, I know people hear this, so we're gonna ask, we're gonna request to further explain this, but go ahead, can sure. you tell me about the more common causes? Yeah, I, the two most common reasons would be in, in younger population, which would be 20s, 30s, 40-year-old patients, typically it'd be a herniated disc or bulging disc or bulging disc protrusion, disc, right. which we can kind of talk about the various definitions yeah. of each of those things because they are similar and sometimes people get confused on what's the difference between a protrusion and a bulge and a herniation. Mm -hmm. But in the younger population or middle-aged population, typically it's herniated discs or bulging discs that cause people to have back pain. Um, or have what we call radiculopathy, which is pain going down the leg or numbness and tingling in the leg. And that's a result of either in inflammation of a nerve or direct compression of the nerve from the herniated disc. Uh, so that's typically in younger patients. In, in middle-aged patients or slightly older patients with time, age, wear and tear, and unfortunate genetics, uh, mm -hmm. people get degenerative discs. Yes. And when you get degenerative discs, that causes a lot of back pain. And when the disc is wearing out, it loses water content is what's happening. It's dehydrating. dehydrating. So it becomes a little more brittle. It's more susceptible to tearing. Yeah. And then you can get little tears in the disc called annular tears. And those can be extremely painful. Yeah. So between herniated discs and degenerative discs, that's typically what will drive yes. somebody to have enough pain while they'll go and seek care. Now, what he mentioned are anatomically anatomic issues, but then accidents, motor vehicle accidents can, can lead to having back pain. Infection can lead to having back pain. Um, he mentioned genetics, that's amazing. Age, age is another reason where back pain can happen as well. Um, I wanted to bring these causes out to you guys that there could be various reasons why back pain can happen, but we need to come to the root cause of it. Once we know the reason of it, I think we, we get a better idea of how we can help that patient to be back pain free right so before i move more on i know i have he says everything so beautifully i just want to keep listening to what dr valenti explains but before we say you want to say hi to a few viewers sure <laughs> all right let's see let's see who are some wonderful people who join rosalinda says hi hi rosa hey rosa mamta sigdal she's one of my esteemed nurse practitioners as well she said hi hi, hi. and saima also says hi once again, thank you to all of you people who took time out to join us here and who are watching Tea Time with me and Dr. Valenti. We are, uh, we are today talking about back and neck issues and we wanna talk about what are the common causes of it. Uh, if you like this, please, sh I hope you like it, but do definitely share this amongst your loved ones and uh, please share this on your social media as well. So moving along, Doc, what, um, what, what have you seen in this pandemic? mostly happening for back and neck issues. Sure, so the interesting thing is that we've seen some patients who develop radiculopathy from having COVID. And it's not really talked about or published, but um, anecdotally, I have definitely seen it. And in fact, um, my wife unfortunately had oh. COVID and oh, okay. she she's okay now, she, okay. she recovered completely and um, fortunately didn't have to be hospitalized. We just you know quarantined her oh, in the God. house. Yeah. Yes. And, um, but she was uh, pretty symptomatic, and what she noticed in the weeks after her diagnosis, uh, and it lingered for about two months, uh, was uh, posterior leg pain, radiculopathy. Oh. Hmm. And so what we, we think is going on is that the, the virus is creating an inflammatory, inflammatory response, response, which we all know, that's, yeah. that's well proven and known about COVID, that it, it generates a, a, a strong inflammation inflammatory response. Throughout the body, yeah. And um, when you get an inflammatory response, that's not just limited to, for example, the lungs, right? So yes. the inflammation can be of the nerves too, coming out of your low back or your neck. Yes. And when the nerves in the low back get inflamed, you get what's called radiculopathy, which is basically irritation of a nerve and you get symptoms in that nerves pattern or distribution. And so when the, the nerves in the low back get inflamed, you typically get pain that goes down the thigh or the leg and can be into the foot. 
uh, or the numbness and tingling. And so that's what she experienced for a couple months wow. from COVID. Wow. So this is, this is I, I actually also did not know that radiculopathy in post-COVID patients has been seen. And you're right, there is not much data out mm -hmm. there. So this is good to know, guys, that if there are people who, are, who have had dealt with COVID, mild, moderate, or severe COVID, you could possibly have inflammation of the back nerves that could then cause uh, pain, leg pains, numbness, and tingling. So that that's wow. So that's one something we found in in uh, pandemic. One thing um, we hear so much about we we actually end up diagnosis our patients when we get a neck pain and a back pain. We learn about spondylysis. Can you tell our viewers about spondylysis? What is it? What is this word meaning? And I sure. Know there's a little yeah, and I I do have a a poster that I had. I worked with a medical illustrator to um to make this poster I'll because this you, all the images that I would find throughout the years through my medical textbooks or just online, they never really illustrated the pathology in the back or yeah. things that cause people to have symptoms. Really, the way that I thought would help illustrate it to patients so to they patients can easily understand. understand it. So Absolutely. so I worked for a couple months with a medical illustrator going back and forth yeah. and getting them to draw exactly what I wanted. You know? Yes, I was learning that about you. So these yeah. are actually illustrations done and visioned by Dr. Valenti and now they're been in this form so that patients can understand back and neck issue beautifully. So please doc, please tell me spondylysis when we sure. tell these patients to our patients. What what is it? What Right. Is it? So you know medical terminology it's like a foreign language, right? It's like yes. when we were first year medical students, you know, I sat there with my medical yeah. text in a in a medical dictionary and had to look up every word. So spondylysis, what does that mean? Spondy yes. means spine. Okay. Lysis means split or fracture. So really what it is is this fracture in the spine. And in particular, it's a fracture of an area of the spine called the pars. So this right here is a picture of a pars fracture. This area of the bone is the pars, which happens to be the weakest part of the vertebrae. Uh -huh. So that's typically if somebody's gonna fracture, they fracture through the pars. Mm -hmm. And if you have a fracture through the pars, we call it spondylolysis. Okay. Now it gets confusing because a lot of times people read their MRI reports and they see words that are very similar. And if you've right. never heard these words before, then you kind of get confused because well, yeah. you might see spondylysis, spondylolisthesis, Lysthesis. spondylosis. Right. Those are actually three different things. So just to walk through them real quick. Spondylosis refers to arthritis in the spine. Okay. Spondylysis, the lysis means the fracture. The fracture. That's the fracture, the spondylysis. Yeah. And then spondylolisthesis means a slip of the spine because exactly. spondy again means spine and listhesis means slip. slip. And so here's a picture of the spondylolisthesis. Oh, okay, beautiful. fancy word, but again, spondy means spine, listhesis means slip. So you have the L4 bone yeah. shifted forward relative yeah. to the L5 bone. That's not normal. The bone should line up perfectly in line. When they don't, when one's shifting off the other, that's a sign of instability. Okay. And that can cause a tremendous amount of back pain. Yes. In yes. addition, when the when the bone pulls forward, it can pull at the nerve root and cause the radiculopathy, radiculopathy. the irritation in the nerve so root that's distribution. that's where we guys, we're talking about radiculopathy, nerves getting affected in the spine, causing numbness and tingling down. This is this is where your, body, your spine goes through, where you see the nerves are now getting affected by the arthritis or the spondylolisthesis and all that. Okay. Correct. So, thank you. Wow, doc. I, I have to take a break and, and, and learn. Wow. Sama, you want us to just yeah. fix, fix this? Thank you, thank you so much. So we, we, we talked about just spondylosis, a little bit about spondylolisthesis and what they are. But a common one that we hear, Doc, is bulging disc. Sure. Or herniating disc. Sure. How do we, how shall we explain that to our viewers? What is a bulging disc or a herniating disc? Sure, so they're very similar terms. Um, and sometimes people, even radiologists and other doctors, use them somewhat interchangeably. interchangeably. Right. And there's right. some, discussion or argument is that exactly what the definition of one would be versus the other. other. Okay, in, in general, I would say that um, many practitioners uh, would use the term bulge as a generalized bulging of the disc. So if you think about it like a donut, okay? okay. Let's just say we have a jelly-filled donut, okay. okay? And we take this jelly-filled donut and we compress it, okay? If we take the jelly-filled donut and we compress it, the whole donut kind of squishes out. Yes. Okay, so that would be a bulge where the disc circumferentially bulges out or a large, large area, area, large circumferential area bulges out. A protrusion is a little bit more focal where it's maybe only, you know, a small portion of that donut or disc kind of bulges out. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's kind of broad based, meaning it bulges out 
longer mm -hmm. than it does depth wise. I see. Okay. And then a herniation, oftentimes people will use that term when it, uh, the piece of disc that comes out goes out farther mm -hmm. than it does wide. So like, for example, if you take that jelly donut and you compress it down and a piece of the jelly squirts out, squirts out. yeah, that's what most people would call the herniation mm -hmm. when a piece of the jelly in the jelly donut squirts out. But unfortunately where it usually squirts out is into the spinal canal where the nerves are running right, right behind the disc. Right. And so when that piece, and, and it could be, that nerve could get affected from a protrusion, a bulge, or a herniation. I see. So that's why herniating disc. So what, what's a disc? Why, where is the disc? We have our bones sitting on top of each other, right, Doc? And so that's our jelly, that's our donut and a donut. And then the jelly, the disc is the jelly right there he's talking about that's sitting in between your spine, right? Am I correct. Correct. Let's, right? let's look that's at the, sure. yeah. yeah. This will help orientate people to the anatomy, which is... We'll keep it here really important to understand. So, okay, so this is, these are the bones. There's five bones in the low back, okay? Mm -hmm. So we number them, we call the low back the lumbar spine. So L is for lumbar. We have five bones in the low back. L1, we call them L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. The tailbone, which we call the sacrum, we, this is S1, okay? So the discs are the shock absorbers in between the bones. And so, for example, we have this nomenclature to describe which disc we're talking about. So if we're talking about this disc here, we call this disc the L4-5 disc. Why? Because it's in between the L4 bone and the L5 bone. Now the disc, like I said, is like a shock absorber. It's typically 95% or more water content. That's normal. But what happens is with age, wear and tear and genetics is sometimes yeah. that can desiccate, which means right. dry, out. dry out. And then if the disc becomes, you know, 80%, 70%, 50% mm -hmm. water instead of 95%, that's when right. it collapses down and gets more brittle and can susceptible to tear herniation. herniation. And so this would be a picture of a degenerative disc where the, the disc is wearing out. As you see the, see how nicely, how thick and how, how wonderfully they're sitting. But when they get herniated, I mean degenerated, which means wear and tear, old maybe, they are all smaller in size. They're looking all inflamed around it. So then, dog, this herniation. I know you have a beautiful picture of herniation. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yep. So here's the disc. You see the the disc that between the two bones of the spine, and when it protrudes down and hits the nerve. Now here's where it is hitting your nerve, and then when this nerve gets hit. It not only uh, gives you pain, but numbness and tingling symptoms, right, Doc? That's and correct. And then bulging disc. This is, is there a picture of bulging disc? Right there. there it is. Mm -hmm. That's the bulging disc picture that Dr. Valente was explaining us. All of these disc issues, whether it's degenerative, whether it's bulging, whether it's herniating, they are extremely painful. And if they are affecting the nerve, the radiculopathy symptoms are off the charts. I mean, patients are having symptoms day or night. They are having symptoms during activities of daily life walking for long periods or standing for long periods or sitting for stand periods, all of this gets affected, right, Doc? Correct. And over time, if this is uncorrected, they go through atrophy, where the nerves are constantly being hit and not being attended, then the nerve is supposed to help your, the nerves from the back are actually coming all the way down to your legs as well and helping you feel the sensation and everything over there. But if the nerve's getting affected over time, the muscles in the legs are also sort of, when I say atrophy, they're giving up and they're getting more weaker and weaker which then further leads to more pain major cause of falls in our geriatric population too and then falls means fractures sometimes if they are hit they hit their head then more head injuries and things like that which is why back pain we we try to take it serious not only my family practice place but i'm sure dr valenti also will explain no little back pain is just little we have to make sure where it's coming from and address it right away that's right correct down? that's correct Thank you, Doc. I'm mm -hmm. gonna keep this yeah. right here. Okay. Here. So, guys, how did you guys like about bulging disc and herniating disc? Wasn't that that an amazing illustration and explanation by wonderful Dr. Valenti? I once again thank you for everybody who joined on um, on uh, watching us with the back pain and the neck pain issue. I'm trying to see, Doc, if anybody else had any questions for us. If anybody wanted to, so we have Rachel Jones. She says hi and we have taylor taylor says hi from toya and taylor hi sweethearts i hope you guys are doing great somebody mentioned dog this is a great poster and i agree again i'm telling this these are the illustrations actually imaginated created by dr valenti so he can help his patients understand the different issues that happen in the back and the spine so 
I agree. It's very awesome. And uh, Rachel Jones has been uh, has com uh, commented that this is very informative, learning about back and issues about back. Good. Um, <laughs> there is a patient by Alvira White who mentions there she has mega back pain because she went through long story short scoliosis with rod instrumentation and fusion. Yeah. So Doc, uh, I I know I see a lot of patients too, and thank you, Miss White, for bringing that. Thank you, everybody who's uh, who's giving us a a shout out here. And I'm going to come again and, and see everybody who I missed. But Doc, all these patients who go through these rod and, and surgery and, and all that, I'm sure that's not the first step we go into it, obviously. What are, how do we deal with, let's say, if somebody comes to you with a bulging disc and herniated disc, how do we approach it for our, our patients sure. initially? So nine times out of ten, patients that come and see me, and you gotta you got to imagine I'm a spine surgeon, so it's your situation has to be pretty bad for someone to actually come and see me. Right. But that being said, the people that come and see me, nine out of 10, we get better with conservative treatments, not mm -hmm. surgery, okay? Right. Or, and they don't need surgery, and it's not an emergency. Did so, you guys hear that? It's not always surgery related, and it's not an emergency right away. Thank right. you. I wanted to reiterate it because a lot of patients get feared with the back pain. Oh, I have to go through surgery now. Right. But a lot of times could be taken care with conservative measures. And I'll, I'll tell a little bit more about conservative measures, but sorry, Larry, go ahead. Doc. Sure. So, you know, I view my primary role is diagnosing and educating, mm -hmm. right? So that's first. So first we diagnose what the problem is, what's causing the patient's symptoms, and then I give all the reasonable treatment options. And typically that involves anti-inflammatory medications, giving the patient's body time. body time. You know, I'm of the philosophy that the body can heal itself in many instances, and if we just give it time, the natural process in the human body will help hear, heal the situation and the patient's pain or symptoms will be alleviated. Thank you so much for saying that because that's something I tell my patients all the time. Guys, it's not Amazon Prime. Give it more than two days. Right. Body will heal. Body will recover. And, and give it time to, to recuperate. Right. So. Here, here's another interesting statistic. 95% of people who have an acute episode of back pain, severe enough where mm -hmm. they actually seek care from a provider, from a doctor or PA nurse practitioner, 95% mm -hmm. of people who end up seeking care for their back pain will be symptom-free in four weeks. Wow. So that's another thing for everybody, I think, to keep in mind, you know, that if you have an acute episode of back pain, there's a 95% chance that in four weeks you'll be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Now, there are, of course, warning signs, things like if you lose control of your bowel or bladder, or if you have weakness of your arm or hand or foot or leg, that's a different situation and you should seek medical attention or go to an emergency room if, if one of those things happen, okay? But as I was saying before, most patients, with, when they come and see me, you know, they, it's not an emergency, it's not bowel or bladder dysfunction, they're not, you know, they can walk, they're not dragging their leg, right? They don't have a true neurologic deficit, what we refer to as doctors as neurologic deficits. Yeah. But with pain, numbness, tingling, things like that, typically we can get them better with time, anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, chiropractic care, home exercises to strengthen the core, to the core. Right. traction, decompression, injections if they fail that stuff. And that's nine out of 10 patients. Now, when, those, when people don't get better enough with those treatments and their quality of life is affected enough where they're starting to take pain medications chronically, they're missing work, they can't enjoy their life. life. They can't play with their kids, yes. they can't pick them up, they can't go play tennis or golf Absolutely. or walk around the grocery yeah. store. And they failed time, anti-inflammatories, physical Therapy. therapy injections. injections, that's when, and there's a mechanical problem, like one of the things I show on the poster, a mechanical problem that we can improve surgically, that's when surgery becomes an option. Got it. And then the patient, I, my philosophy is let the patient decide, educate them and have them decide. Right. So that's, I would say probably my leading philosophy is I see myself again as my role to diagnose, to educate mm -hmm. and to allow the patients to make their own educated decisions. I feel like my role is to empower my patients so that they can have the freedom to make a good decision for themselves. And that I will, I will, of course, help them in any way that they ask me to, to help them come to that conclusion if they want me to. And then if they end up deciding that it's time for surgery, then, of course, I also perform the surgeries, both minimally invasive and traditional spine surgeries, just depending on the, the Which, right surgery for that, that individual patient's Absolutely. problem. So it all depends on, 
again guys not all back pain will need surgery but not all back pain will get better with conservative measures like he said each and every case depends on where you are in your ailment is it mild moderate severe is there herniation problem is there a degenerative problem and then specialist i and and dr valenti and anybody whom you choose to see we try to first do conservative measures where you don't need to go through under the knife you don't need to do the surgery there are other modalities that we can help but there will might be a time where it's worsening it's not getting better then we have to take a surgical consultation and again i'm pretty sure dr valenti we always send for example if i were to send a referral to doctor consult uh, for dr valenti hey doc it's a consultation where he discusses these are the issues on the patient this patient will probably benefit from so and so procedure or maybe no procedure or or what have you depending on the patient again it's a consultation so we work in hand in hand to see what will be the best approach for the patient sometimes we wait and watch sometimes that's all we want to do is wait and watch the reason because body takes time to heal and recover a um, couple of things i always tell my patients that healthy and balanced diet is always at a, is always always going to help you anybody who deals with a little bit of weight issues so we do a quite a bit of weight loss program at my at my clinic and my patients know me we do a quite a bit of weight loss challenge and i've noticed that losing weight does help in ailing a little bit of back pain and neck pain so we always try to get and and educate patient on that um he mentioned chiropractor he mentioned therapy those are some great modalities that we both look for our patient first and then we think about surgery doc before we we talked so much about back and i'm pretty sure people are probably going to watch this over and over again to just understand the anatomy and understand the different things that happen in the back but um i wanted to ask you what are some tips that we can tell our patients that can help them prevent back pain and i I'll ask you what are some patients in pandemic everybody is doing zoom calls doing zoom meetings doing zoom virtual schooling teaching kids so we are constantly sitting in front of the computer i've had multiple cases where they have the back pain and spasms and neck pain um so i wanted to ask you are there any tips you wanted to share with them and tell them how can they help prevent it absolutely so Starting at the top with the neck, yeah. I'd say, you know, we have this new thing that has occurred over the last 10 years or so, mm -hmm. which is we all are on our devices, whether that's our cell phone or looking down at a laptop. And mm -hmm. so we actually have a term for this now. It's called tech neck. So tech for technology. So new tech term. Neck. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tech so neck. basically we're like this all day, right? So if you look at the side, you know, what am I doing? I'm flexing my neck forward. Well, that puts pressure on my disc. And when you put pressure on the disc, that can wear the disc out, causing degenerative disc disease, yes. tears in the disc. And when you press down on the disc, a piece can pop out pop the back, right. which can also cause a radiculopathy. radiculopathy. So we're yes. seeing more and more neck problems mm -hmm. in the last 10 years because of people using their devices. So my recommendation would be, look at your phone up here. You want your neck to be in a neutral position, okay? Yes. Looking straight ahead, not flexed down, but looking straight ahead. So what does that mean practically while we go throughout our day? That means having our phone up here at eye level, raising our computers up, you know, even if you have to set it on some books or something to get that at eye level. So that's pretty much for the neck. As far as the low back goes, there's a few different things I would say. Number one, we have to focus on our posture. You know, and I'm, I'm, Thank you so I have to remind myself posture. every day and I find myself in a room with yeah. a patient and, and I'll be trying to tell them and then I, well, I, know, I better, I, I better do it I myself, you know, like, so yeah. I sort of Sit prop up. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, posture is huge. Posture matters guys. Yes, yes. Big time. In fact, in my car, I have lumbar support in my car Ooh. that I bought, you know, just, it's like a little pillow. It goes on my low back and it so helps, it helps, to, helps the, helps the support have maintain the lumbar lordosis, okay. which is basically the normal curvature in the low back. Okay. Okay. Cause our, our tendency is to let gravity pull us down and it mm -hmm. pulls our shoulders down and that pushes our low back right. out, but that's not how our body wants to be. Right. If you put lumbar support, a little pillow in the small of your back pushes you to have a posture proper. Right. When you're, yeah. when you're in the car or when you're in the, in your, you know, sofa, mm -hmm. you know, if you do that, that will help. The other thing I would say is try to avoid repetitive twisting and bending. Try to avoid overhead heavy lifting. Right. And certainly don't bend over at the waist and lift. Right. That's Do a big no. proper no. technique, right? right? Bend at the hips and bend, knees. Exactly. Bend the hips and knees, guys. Proper lifting will take away back and neck pain. I mean, prevent it for sure. And then amongst, amongst the posture, amongst the good support, proper shoes help. 
please i mean i i can't stress enough i know i start getting low back pain and hip pains when i am without proper shoes on the wooden floor in the house so proper shoes i've noticed help quite a bit in, in preventing back pains i talked about weight loss i talked about exercise stretching from time to time fixing your posture healthy and balanced diet i cannot stress enough that alcohol use and uh, smoking use and all these do affect in having and causing you degenerative which means wear and tear of your organs of your body and that could definitely affect the spine as well um and then other thing i said weight loss whatever you can do if you want to be if you got motivated by looking at me and seeing dr valenti and you want to do weight loss we are here at capel give us a call at 972-906-9130 now quest care has 11 dfw locations so if i am not in your neighborhood and you want to find a primary care within the quest care medical clinics uh, family our number is 214-712-2054 um, Dr. Valenti's information, I'm going to post it here in the comments for you guys. If you guys are somebody who's been dealing with back pain, you have done all the stuff that we talked about here today, the conservative measures of physical therapy, or somebody who just mentioned that they've been going through rod instrumentation and have been still having a lot of pain, and want to get an opinion from Dr. Valenti, I'll give his information here so you guys can contact him. And like I said, he has locations in Plano, Fort Worth, Decatur, I miss him. South Lake. South Lake. Fort Worth. Yeah. Fort Worth. So he's all over DFW as well. Um, we talked a lot about back pain and neck pain in the coming um, this month of May. I want to address a lot of these patients uh, to with physical therapy uh, segments on Tea Time. So please stay tuned for upcoming Tea Time shows. If you guys liked us, please share this on your social media. Comment, like us, tag us, view us. And uh, please, again, Say thank you to our wonderful Dr. Valenti who took time out today and brought beautiful illustrators for us to explain back pain and neck pain. So thank you so much, Dr. Valenti, for being here. Entire Quetzcar team at Kapal thanks you for that. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed it. It's our pleasure. At the end of our show, we do a little raffle. So whoever put comments or said hi, we are going to give them a little prize. So I'm going to have Dr. Valenti do the honors. Pick one name out, Doc. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Who's the lucky winner? <laughs> All right, the initials are LP. So LP, my office will be contacting you and you'll be, come, please come and collect your raffle prize. Look at here, see how cute it is? It's nice and red and shiny. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I again say thank you to all of you who joined us. Please go ahead and get pen, uh, vaccinated. We are not out of the pandemic yet. Stay safe, correct your posture. See me or Dr. Valenti if you want to, but stay tuned for the coming up tea time with Quest Cares. Ciao.